Hey, uh, good morning, and uh, welcome to Office Hours for Korean Natural Farming for October 23rd. Skidoo. And, um, yeah, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Tell you what, man, it's a lot of effort to make it here, and especially when I got a bunch of things going on on the farm that, you know, require my attention and so forth. And the last couple weeks, been building a barn and a shed basically to store all my stuff and um it has been quite the activity because i haven't been able to get much else done and just working 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 on building and um nobody's doing any farming well i mean not to say my wife's doing a bunch and you know um but anyway let's uh let's get some higher wisdom because Sure, as everyone knows, I need it as much as we all do. So let's see what we got today. And it's progress, amazingly. So. It says, You progress like the rising sun. The brighter your virtue, the higher you rise. This hexagram announces a time of significant and easy progress. Your influence and understanding grows by leaps and bounds, as long as you maintain your alliance with the sage. For it is from that alliance that the current progress springs. The only limit to growth now is your devotion to higher things. If this is true, complete, and steady, there will be great gains now. The image of this hexagram is that of the sun rising over the earth. To our view, the further it moves away from darkness, the higher the sun rises. The same is true of us. The extent to which we progress is determined from how far we distance ourselves from inferior influences. It is important when success comes not to fall into the traps of the ego, taking credit for gains, resting on laurels, indulging in desires, or plotting towards ambitions. A superior person instead uses times of progress to brighten their vir virtue, recognizing that it was their commitment to proper principles that brought about success in the first place. Continue to purify your thoughts, attitudes, and conduct now the greatest power in this beneficial time accrues to those who serve the higher power in every moment. So, hey, oh, um, yeah. So glad, glad to be with you. Glad to put all those other things aside for about an hour. Dive into this. Get deep into Korean natural farming. Nourish this community. Nourish myself by just thinking of all these great things. And, you know, that's all good. And so, what's up? It's great, great to see you guys. Mitchell coming in. Um, <laughs> it's snowing already where he's at. Oh, man, that's wild. It's so nice here. Uh, beautiful weather, although it does look like it's going to rain today, which is going to interfere with my painting. I don't know if you noticed my hat's a little bit different. But I was painting all yesterday holding 10 pounds of paint out at arm's length all day and just, oh gosh, man, talk about a workout and being out of shape. Um, but good to see you all here. Let's see. Um, Mackleby is asking, what should I be preparing now for spring? I got a 50 pound bag of brown sugar. Awesome. That's, uh, having the sugar is awesome. I would um, take your your harvests that are coming in now. So, you know, if you got zucchinis, tomatoes, whatever you got, the fruits of the season. It all it all depends on where you're at too, right? But I'm assuming you're in a more temperate climate, and so whatever you're harvesting now, ferment it. Have it ferment all over the um, winter. And then save some of that sugar or buy more sugar for spring when the new shoots are coming up and then get those as well. Um, you know, fall is fruit time. Um, also a great time right now. What should you be preparing for right now? 
uh, winterizing your garden, put a bunch of microbes out. So over the winter, and if it was just fall, I don't know if it's it's still fall, right? Yeah, I don't know. The seasons are a little bit weird here, but um, you know, fall, rake up all your leaves, put them into your garden bed, put um, IMOs or the disgustingly cheap microbes out there, and make it so that you're building this soil so it'll break down all winter. So when you go to sow next season, it'll be just rich, fertile, amazing land. Um, and go to your neighbors if they're going to throw away their leaves and say, hey, I'll take all your leaves for you. I'll come pick them up. You bag them, I'll pick them up and uh, bring all those to your land and make like a thing of leaves like this deep and, um, you know, water that and throw IMOs on it, put the maintenance solution into it. You know, all that. If you, Yeah, so if you're in Missouri, it's going to freeze. I've been to Missouri. It's cold. I've seen snow there. Walk through the uh, that big archway thing. And also, I was almost drowned in a swamp down in the Ozarks. Not really, but we got our truck stuck, and it was cold, and it started to freeze, and got stuck in the mud, and the Mississippi River was overflowing. Great times in the Missouri. Um, so... Um, Brown sugar or molasses. I just got a free five gallons. Um, yeah, make make uh, brown sugar from white sugar or use molasses to activate things. It's not a preservative, but if you take molasses and put it in a drum and then put also lactobacillus and the IMOs with the molasses and activate it with water, then it'll it'll start to breed out and go and grow. And uh, good to see Barnaby here. Turns out he is the one that was collecting the um, the IMOs in Paris. So good to see. And um, what, did, what did they say? Uh, yeah. So anyway, great, great to see people from all over the world going. And yeah, someone's saying push the like and boost it if you want to. I don't know. I always, I'm always amazed that, you know, show up every year or every day for a whole year, you know, and uh, it's good. Okay, so morning, y'all. What's up? What's up? Um, so Barnaby's asking, um, do you need to take out the solids when your vinegar is done and ready? Um, it 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 helps. Um, I I usually strain it off, and then actually, if I don't want the scobies to grow back, I'll sort of pasteurize it just a little bit, just meaning just raise the temperature just a bit on the um, stuff. On, on the solution there and it'll it'll help um and then here let's see here i got a little let's see i wanted to preview a little bit of this because um i just sent um some of this over to uh post up media so let's see let me double click this get this open here and give you guys just a little preview of what else you can do with the solids in there and let's see transition this over and here you go this is from filming some of our can of tutorials earlier <laughs> stop recording <laughs> stop recording no, now it's recording again it. you have to do it again yeah give me it <laughs> oh my god it was really intense bro Feel. It's alive. You took a it, you took a bite out of it alive. What it's goby side. It doesn't have a central nervous system. You're right. You can totally eat can it. it. Yeah, just eat the rest of it. It's not living enough. You must eat. Are you gonna, are you gonna get? I'm already filming. Yeah. It's the worst the second time. I can't believe you did it a second time. Probably oh. good the third time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, How about the state of mind. Great. It's I the like best. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeps me healthy. Pizza. You like pizza? No. Oh yeah, there you go. Get some, uh, you know, preview of what else you can do with the solids that float to the top of your vinegar. 
And uh, that was that was a wild thing. We filmed a whole bunch and got a really nice scoby on our vinegar. It's a nice one. Um. So. Can you make a scoby hotel? Yeah, if you don't eat it all first. Delicious. Um. Yeah, below should be good. All that, you know. It's good, it's good, it's good. Um. Yeah, so the scoby, scobies take um, t typically a couple months to form that thick. You know, that one you see there was about a three-month-old scoby coming up and uh, getting in there. Um, and then, yeah, so then uh, Find a Genius is asking, Can I make water-soluble calcium? or KNF reproduction from calcium hydroxide, and I don't know, I don't think so. Um, I don't, I'm gonna look up what calcium hydroxide is. It's a chemical, I would say no. Um, it's, okay, so it's traditionally called slaked lime and it's an inorganic formula with calcium uh, hydroxide, obviously OH squared. Um, and, um, slacked with water. Yeah, uh, hydrated lime. No, no, no. Yeah, no, it's hydrated lime. No, um, it doesn't work to dissolve it, um, because your other one that you're making it from, um, is calcium carbonate. So, so let me just share this over here and show you what I'm looking at. But basically, make it bigger here. Um, basically, he's you know you're looking at this chemical formula here, which is um, calcium OH, and what the vinegar does is it actually makes CO2 come out. So because there's no carbon in this, so what you're what you're wanting to dissolve is calcium carbonate this one here, and you see the f chemical formula for this is CaCO3, and what happens is when you add the vinegar in, it uh, reacts with the C, the carbon here, and the oxygen, and releases CO2, so you're left with a calcium oxide in there, because the CO2 plus whatever comes out of the vinegar, the chemical reaction that way, so um, calcium hydro hyd hydroxide won't work but calcium carbonate will work so um so this is like limestone sedimentary rocks eggshells shellfish pearls um you know agricultural lime um yeah lime scale so so those are the, those are the things you're looking for to make water soluble calcium or as we call it here knf reproduction so it, i don't think it'll work with the um, calcium hydroxide. I don't think you'll get the same chemical reaction, and then you end up with um, I forget I forget the exact name of it. What you end up with in solution, but um, I don't think the hydroxide will react the same way. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe 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 show me the chemicals and show me show me the reaction, and maybe it'll work. But I don't I don't as, as far as I can tell, I don't think so. Um, but I, I could be wrong too. Um, you know. Who knows? Um, okay. Um, yeah, and um, I would take uh, Barnaby. I would take that stuff off, not the scoby, the fruit part. Um, currently, he's making some lemon vinegar. I, I would take that off, um, and then slightly heat up the vinegar to keep it from after it's done and the pH is below two point four, and you got a finished uh, KNF cleanser, also known as vinegar. Um, I'd heat it up so that. Um, it doesn't continue to grow scobies. Um, so, yeah, um, let's see. 71 DP0. I've been learning a lot from your older videos, just dipping my toes into the regen world. It's transformed my outlook on damn near everything. Yes, I don't know how it would not if you get into this. I don't know how you can ignore it afterward because... It's like, whoa, this is, uh, you know, it's where it's at, right? So, um, 
and you know if you're looking for my older videos all that kind of stuff um you know can hit the uh go to my channel there find that um you know find this channel uh, pure knf dr drake here uh, my scroll wheel's broken right now i don't know why i don't buy an m720 logitech mouse that's all i can tell you but tons of stuff here and even more if you hit videos and then you can also search for your favorite topic and like um like imo for instance and see and it just tons of things here pop up you know um showing you all kinds of things you know and some some are better than others like this one's really good on how to make imo collected indoors um so um sup tyler how are you man hope hope it's okay where you're at <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um so what's uh when you have made maintenance solution to mix in with your uh, chicken feed imo4 how much are you putting in how much can you store it once it's mixed breathable lid with that okay so chicken food um you know one of the things i was doing last week and continuing to do this week that i wanted to do at least is continue with that um, Master Cho presentation, which I reckon it made me download last week. So I should be able to find it here. Let's see, go to my downloads. Yeah, this one, show it in the finder. Open this one up. Oh, you know why it's already open in this here, right here, okay. So, um, so I was gonna continue with this here I'm going to transition over to this side, and in fact, I want um, this view, transition, that one. Okay, so here, um, here on this presentation from Master Cho here, looking at this, um, I was here on slide number eight, but I'm going to scroll down to almost the end here and get into the poultry farming and scroll past some of this i'll come back to some of this but what i wanted to do was see where did he talk about the livestock feed nope he didn't um so i'm just gonna go scroll find out where they're talking about that livestock feed oh here it is okay so when you are making um livestock feed this is where how master cho does it here where basically it's all these foods kind of mixed together and this is imo and compost or not compost but um the feeds and then he puts this layer over it and then kind of lets it all compost together and make like this lasagna type of thing and that's what he's doing so what he's doing is he's making a week's worth of food for his pigs or chickens um, and then having the next box start so that it ferments for a whole week before he feeds it to him. And he has multiple of these boxes. And so when you're asking how long, um, you can do it this way. What I do at my place is just a 24 hour ferment of the, um, of the feed. Um, and does he talk about the food? No. Okay. So anyway, I'll transition. Uh, not that one this one um so you know so the feed itself uh let's see here i have it i have it out there and about someplace but let me just pull it up right here right now i wish my scroll wheel was working um let's see here livestock livestock um yep here we go so let's see here um bring this one over here and then transition this back and here here's talking about the um livestock feed formula this is a presentation that i made based on master cho's teachings um and you can feed it to pigs and to chickens um but essentially what it is when I'm making my chicken feed is I use half um, or one third of 
Ah, oh, is it even written here? Yeah, here it is. Okay. One third of leaves, grasses, and roughage. So, um, and then, um, and so for me, that's, um, that's this scratch that I'm buying right now. Otherwise I would just smash the, the leaves up and grind them smaller, put that in. Uh, 30% of roots, grains, and proteins, which in my case, I'm using the chicken feed from the store right now and 30% fruits and then 10% activated IMO into there. So this, this formula right here is what's, um, what's above right here. And so that's mixed all together in this bucket. And then into that, I'm putting um, the maintenance solution, which this is, um, this is your, um, you know, uh, this is my can of food, can of cleanser, structure, and um, medicine. So all those um, go in um, at the right ratio, and I dilute it one to a thousand. Uh, but I, I actually, I actually freehand pour into it because I'm not exactly like accurate, accurate. I freehand pour it in and about pouring about, uh, two ounces into a five gallon bucket that I, I now fill up to about here with the amount of chickens we have. I, it's about two thirds full. Um, and all these go in together and I actually have it pre-mixed as a maintenance solution, but this is just showing you. And then this here, this is a cup of seawater. It also is added to it so they get enough minerals and then that I, I um, add this up till it's 80 percent moisture content and the next day it'll absorb all these things and and grow so so into this you know here's the IMO going in and all these solutions going in and then I add additional water to bring it up to 80 percent and um, that's that's how I make the animal feed and then when it's talking about in this formula here about the leaves grasses and roughage here um, another thing to do is to ensile those things. So here's here's Ray Yoon. I was just talking. The goof man was just talking about Ray, and I was talking about him a little bit. He did a great um, workshop for us with under um, his his organization. And um, here's how he's making it. So he's pop into a, this bin here. He's adding in um, you know a plastic liner into a bin so the rats can't eat through this. And then this plastic liner keeps the oxygen out. And then he's putting in 15 uh, centimeters of shredded material, which in this case, it was corn, sil corn, shredded corn that we ran through a chipper shredder. And then a dusting of IM, uh, activated IMO on top of that. So put in 15 centimeters, dust it with the AIMO, then put 15 more centimeters of material then put the KNF protectors on top of that, a dusting of that, and or if you have it in a liquid form, just a light spray over it. Um, then repeat until full of just alternating between material, AIMO, material, uh, protectors, material, AIMO, material, protectors, until it's full, smash it down each time, each time between, and he's just stepping on it, smashing it down. AIMO is just activated IMO, it's also IMO4, right? IMO4, it's activated, it's ready, IMO4, yeah, there's a lot of vocabulary here, but if you think of it as activated IMO, it's ready to go out, it's ready to be there, versus propagated IMO, which is your IMO3, so uh, so it's actually IMO4, it's activated IMO, that's that's what it, you know, um, it, it, in terms of making the names, I'm trying to use them for application instead of IMO4, it's like confusing of when to use it, but if it's activated IMO, it's ready to go, it's ready to be activated into your soil, activate your soil, the IMOs, you know. Anyway, that's that was kind of our thought process and ideology on that, and filling this up, and then sealing this, and even better, use a vacuum and suck out the um, the water, or the air from, from the top once you get this thing sealed, and really get it, get it, um, go in there so and then um then you leave the thing um airtight for at least four weeks so it's si in siles and then after you use it when you go to open it after it's in sile, then um then you can use it by just drawing drawing some off there and then resealing it each time and the getting it so that it's airtight and and um each time is is you know it depends like you, but once it's ensiled and that means tons of lactobacillus has grown throughout it and it's and it's turned kind of sour to uh to go then it then it stores really well 
and you can use it, kind of pull a bunch out and put it into a smaller basket, use it for your feeds, reseal this thing, keep it, keep it going. Um, yeah, cool. Glad you're, uh, 71 DP zero grabbing some potato scraps to make those things for JMS for transplanting. It's a great, great, uh, great thing. And glad, glad you're able to tune in a little bit, catch it live, you know, and thanks for the thanks if you're not live and all that. Um, so let's see here. So anyway, the animal feeds coming in, doing that. Um, yeah. Um, so <laughs> Thomas here is saying, I, if I remove the brick from my can of fuel that's six plus months old, do you think I would have an issue rise up if I ended up with some floating fish? No, no. Once the fish has been sunk and fermented and, and, um, turned with, um, uh, with lots of lactobacillus, it sh you shouldn't have problems if the fish floats up. It's only in the very beginning that you want to keep the fish down because it, that it hasn't fully fermented. If it's been going for six months, you shouldn't have a problem with it floating up and without the brick on there. Um, yeah, and if you're headed up to Michigan, there's a bunch of folks up there. I definitely look um, look up Mowgli, and he does uh, hemp stuff. Um, Ch Chavre Farms is, is his thing, Mowgli. Uh, he's an amazing dude. Uh, he's into um, commercial hemp, but also natural farming and really a free thinker of all the people I could think of to like hook up with. He's he's an awesome dude up, up in Michigan and I had a bunch of people from Michigan reach out to me and it's, it seems like it's going on up there. So if you guys are going to survive the famine, it's probably you guys up in Michigan. Um, so, um, uh, so Mitchell is asking, what's my thoughts on using spent mushroom blocks or medium to supplement the IMO collection process? Um, IMO collection, I would not use that, um, because the, I, the mushrooms have already eaten out the carbohydrates and you really need a fresh carbohydrate source. So I wouldn't use it to collect microbes. You can use it in the IMO three where you're propagating the microbes, but you're going to have to amend some sort of starch, like carbohydrate, like a, um, like mashed potato shredded instant mashed potatoes or something like that into it, um, to, to put the, the carbohydrates back. You need a whole food. You can't just like grow things without food, right? You can have emaciated things and you, you want the IMO to be as rich as possible. Um, and Joe is making a jadam style liquid fish with mackerel leaf mold and water. That is so nasty. It's, oh, yeah, I it's never smelled anything so bad. I'm reluctant to use it because plenty, because I have plenty of KNF fish amino acid. Jadam is so nasty. He talks about it, how good it is. It's just, it, he's, ah, oh, it's, it's. It, it serves a purpose. It, it, there's certain places to use it, but if you have access to KNF fuel, use that. Like the whole Jadam method where stinkier is better and all that. He's creating tons of pathogens. There's no way it's even, um, you know, Omri approved to use this stuff. It's so gross, so nasty. Um, you know, uh, Young Song Cho, he's, he's always like, I'm the best. And it's like, no, you're really not. This dude right here is the best. Sometimes you can't afford it. But Master Cho, his father was onto something that was just gold. Young Song Cho is on, if you're poor and you can't afford it and you need like, you know, you need a pinch hitter, use that. But really, um, this guy, Master Cho, if you can afford these methods, do these methods. They're way better in every way. Um, and then the Jadam putrefaction, yeah, it's, everyone knows it's like, oh, and yeah, that is Mr. Lee's farm. So what's up, Cheryl? Happy Sunday to you too. Glad you're able to tune in. It's great to see some Idahoans. So, um, yeah. And if you get it on you, your wife will make you sleep in the yard. Yeah. Young Sung Cho's methods are so putrid that if you get them on you, you'll smell like them for days and it's not good microbes. And it's, it, you know, use at your own risk, your own discretion, you know, it's not, it's not really that the best. Um, 
Oh, okay. And and if Mitchell, if you're saying, but what if I put a pieces of that mushroom block on the rice? Those are not the microbes you're looking for typically. What you're looking for in an IMO collection is all your indigenous microbes that are living in the soil, not like like not like oyster or whatever mushroom spawn these these guys were actually trying to cultivate. So you don't really want those microbes. You're you're after more the indigenous soil microbes that are much more subtle than that. So, um, I mean, you can't, don't get me wrong. You can do that. You, you can just even spread that stuff right around your plants. Um, you know, you'll get some benefit, but they're not, you know, it's like, that's not the microbes you're looking for. You know, you, you really want the, the IMOs. So, so, okay. With that, I caught up to this. Let's go back to slide number eight here. And, um, Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Young Song Cho has his own set of issues, you know. Um, I don't really highly recommend his things unless you're, you really can't afford them. So last week we left off at this, um, it's this long um, presentation from Master Cho. And here we're at this where he's talking about religion and faith, and he really brings it into a spiritual context. It's really nice to see, um, you know, because natural farming is about more than just um more than just farming practices it's about whole body whole spirit whole activation you know and having this faith and understanding that you know in the future you have to have these you know and you can, you guys can read this here but um you know you're um but let's see oh was i was i at, well, yeah maybe i was here and then he's talking about the, this these interesting things that where you, after you come from religion, now you're into this similarity where you're between rice being carbon, oxygen, hyd hydrogen, plus sunlight. That's primarily what it's made out of, which is cho, right? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, cho, and sunlight, right? That's what rice is made out of. And flesh is made out of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, plus nitrogen and sunlight. So this is, and, and we already learned that nitrogen is in the air. It's everywhere in the air, right? So all these things, we come out of the air and we're being, you know, with sunlight and being able to absorb it. This is what constitutes holding everything together, making those carbon bonds, building everything up. And when you start to look at it this way, you realize that we're not that much different than the rice plant. And for me, in Hawaii, it's the banana. Because um, a rice plant is like a small banana, right? You, you got a banana is a huge rice plant, throws out these things. They're all covered the same way, just like a rice grain. And so it's all very similar of what we're getting at and what we're doing of being where rice and, um, you know, it's, it's all the same. All the plant materials, all these things, just a little bit extra nitrogen in there. Um, and uh, that's, that's how it works. And then... Master Cho also brings in some uh, Eastern religion here on the Eightfold Path, which is, um, you know, right, right vision, right intention, right speech, right life. And then all those are your what you do inside of yourself. And then when you go out into the world, you have to have the right view of things, right mindfulness, the right action, and the right livelihood. And I wish I knew a little bit more about this, the Eightfold Path of the Buddhas, um, but very, very, um, you know, doing, you know, almost what, what, what Jesus was teaching too, right? Right. You know, seeing things, loving people, doing these right things and, and then interacting outside with consideration and love and, and really, you know, when you consider things and you love them and you really put this into action, that's, that's where you're, um, you know, you're going to shine and you're going to be in alignment with all the major religions out there of, you know, every, every, I think the bottom line of every religion is love, which is kind of funny because then some people go to war for religion, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, which which part of this did you forget? Oh yeah, the love. Why would you fight for your um, for your belief, right? Because it says love, love thy neighbor, right? Um, as thyself and all this. So, um, so then Master Cho goes in, breaks into this a little bit here, where he's talking about, you know, this is above the soil. Or, no, no, no. Actually, this T means that this is growing here, and this is 
not growing? What is he talking about here? See, it's always, I always, here I am trying to like uh, interpret this and put it into English, but it's always thing. So yeah, here, here, your growing point, this is like your sink. And then I think that one's your source coming out. Um, and, you know, so, so in a growing point, excellent cell division, high metabolism, um, acute adjusting to new circumstances. So it's really adaptable and it can pioneer up here at this level. And then, um, so all these things are what you want, right? That's how it's growing. Um, and I'm not sure why he crossed out this. Maybe the, the roots are going down this far. I'm not exactly sure. But basically you have uh, the growing tip and then the roots down below. What's growing down here? I don't know what a gemule is. I should probably look that up. But in hard soil, um, they will, they'll penetrate. When you've got a small growing plant, it will reach through hard soil and penetrate through. But if you till the top, I think that's what he's saying. Oh, if you till it, you're only tilling them down about 7.8 inches. And then the plant grows down into this soft soil and it hits this hard soil and it stops. And then usually in here, they, you know, we, we, the conventional ag will, will teach you to amend this, which you put in all kinds of, um, you know, uh, manures and, and fertilizers and whatever in this top bit. And you'll get a decent plant to start growing, but as soon as it hits this hard stuff, the plant is lazy, it has an imbalanced di diet, and it's dependent on you to amend this, right? And so as the plant grows down, it hits this, it stops growing, and it can't reach its full potential because the roots are unable to grow to their full potential, and then the top of your plant can't grow to your full potential. And then you start getting disease up here on this overgrowth that grew really well early into the soft stuff, but then the plant here starts to get disease because as it it's this easy when it hits this hard stuff and it can't grow and then your your plant then becomes weak up top and starts to die. So his theory on growing things is not to till, is just to start it in hard soil. And how does he do that? He does it this way. Instead of digging down digging a hole and putting a plant into it where it's soft up top and hard on the sides and, and putting it in, he does it where he digs a very shallow hole, like 12, 12 to 15 inches down here and in sort of a pyramid shape. And so instead of digging and putting it way deep down in here, he digs out in this pyramid shape where it's raised up in the center and then the roots go, and instead of the roots wanting to ball up and roll and, and roll around here, the roots want to instead reach out and penetrate into this harder dirt out here. So he, he has a little bit different tact on how to dig things. And hey, thanks, Super Chat. Thanks. Yay. Yay. Thanks for being me. It's uh, it's good to good to get some... Back, especially today, man. Whew, what a struggle to get here and show up and do all this. I appreciate everyone who helps out the show, makes this happen. If you're appreciating this knowledge, you know what to do. Um, you know, typical YouTube stuff and or super chats, those always help out. And um, I tell you, it's nothing like making it here every week and then sharing this with you guys. So stem and leaf above helio... Heli... There's an O missing heliotropism of liking the sun and the bottom tropism not liking it. So, but let your plant do the digging. You know, in the middle, it's only six inches deep and out on the edges, it's, you know, 12 inches deep so that it's digging this pyramid and the plants are doing this. So if you have a way to dig your plant in, especially trees, um, you plant them this way, they love it. Um, and you won't have later where it grows and then all of a sudden it gets disease later, right? Yeah, what's up, Brownson? I'm going to see you soon, man. I'm coming to the convention on Maui, which I just saw the HFUU um, thing the other day. And apparently I'm like, uh, um, I'm going to be featured there. So let me see here. HFUU.org. Um, if you guys don't know, the Farmers Union of Hawaii. Um, if you're If you're in the States... Or if you're in, um, why isn't it going? Come on, come in. My internet's, what the heck? Okay, there we go. Their site's just slow. 
to load. But if um, if you're going here, I'm going to be at HFUU at their convention. Let me drag this over so you can see it here and get rid of this newsletter sign up. And if you scroll down here to pass this to the convention, uh, or no, they have a bunch of video series while we're checking out. But here at the convention, save the date. 2021 convention page. Let's see. It's going to be December 2nd through 4th. I'll be there doing Korean natural farming. So if you're on Maui or you're in the um, islands, you want to learn some natural farming directly from me, uh, make it there. And um, this is 2021. It's th Yeah, I guess it is 2021. I thought it was going to be next year. But um, yeah, all these great presentations here happening. I don't think, well, I guess I wasn't mentioned here, but they mentioned me in the email, which is great. I'm um, going to help out and get all this together. It's going to be a good time. Hopefully I'll see Bronson there and get, get into that. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to pull up this thing. Where to go? This one. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, this 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 is how to plant things. I know, just uh, jumping around here. Bronson got me on the HFUU because you think he's in the Haleakala chapter. I know, I know, you just had a baby too. I heard about that. Congratulations, Britta. Um, yeah, and um, so here you go. If you're thinking deep tillage, like oh, I got to till, I got to get a tiller to get down. These are all the reasons why not to do it, right? And heavy fertilizing. It weakens your primary and lateral roots and root hairs. There's no reason for them to grow out, right? They're weak. Like, everything's right there. It's all tilled for them. It's soft. They're like, oh, yeah, life's great. And then they then they hit the hard pan, right? And they're like, oh, what is this? It's like a spoiled child. As soon as it gets out in the real world, it's just like a dick to everyone else. They're just like, rah, rah, rah. It's like oh, my gosh, your parents did a terrible job on you. Um, you're making an artificial environment, which is more of your time, energy, effort, everything like, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not against like building raised beds first and doing one raised bed and making it like, I'm not saying just like, just plant it into the hard soil. I'm like, make your soil foundation, but don't every season try to like till it and make it good. You know, make your, make your beds and try to make them permanent from then on out. And if you're, you know, doing root crops or something, you got to continually do it, but try to make it that happen that way. And then, you know, mechanical chemical technique, that's more um, time you got to spend on your farm fixing machines and buying chemicals and driving someplace to go get things. It's like, you know, in, in supporting a chemical industry, have you guys, I like, let me see here. Have you guys seen um, fertilizer plant? If you've never seen, um, like fertilizer plants, I'm just going to transition over. You know how today, like it's cool to be like green and like, you know, like, look at these, these are like, this is a fertilizer plant. Okay. This is what it looks like. Look, dude's got to wear masks and shit. Cause it's dirty. These are some of the gnarliest, um, let's see, it's not showing it to you guys bring this over. And these are some of the gnarliest factories out there are fertilizer plants they're they're literally like you know and if you don't know you're like supporting this type of industry i mean it's just like these things create so much pollution and off gassing and everything you know if you want to be a green green agenda and get your you know proper esgs and make sure that the world economic forum loves you i mean these i've, I've driven by one in korea and it was huge and Fertilizer plant, let's see, Korea, and just see what we got here. Like, it was like a whole block of just, like, industrial stuff that, you know, here you are trying to be a farmer and do good for the earth, and it's just like, I don't know, man. Anyway, I'm I'm just, you know, think of how much mining metal and everything to, like, build these things and just, oh, here, yeah, we, we drove by this place, the Namhe Chemical place and and i drove right by this the 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 uh korean freeway thing goes right by here and nam hey um like yeah so anyway and you'll see i mean look at this this is like where the chemicals come from and it's super gnarly so anyway think think about that you know you're supporting all that 
You're also making interference, interfering with God's will, the nature's will, everything. You're bringing your will on top of the plant instead of what the plant wants. And you're trying to be like, I'm going to force you. I'm going to juice this into you. I'm going to make it grow. And, you know, um, lack of competitiveness because if you, meaning that if I'm buying these chemicals and these mechanical things, I'm as, I'm, my competitiveness is as much as the fertilizer dealer is going to support me, right? Like the only way I can be competitive in that is if I'm able to get the chemicals cheaper or the tractors cheaper, right? Some sort of like, um, uh, Rockefeller type of deal inside deal thing. And, um, and you can't compete against your your other people because you got that and you got the high production costs, right? If fertilizer, chemical prices go up, your prices go up, right? And so you're always having this high production cost and how are you going to compete, right? You want to build a better, more sustainable model, then you got to get rid of the deep tillage and the heavy fertilizing because with with it, you'll never, um, you'll never hedge your, your, you know, anyone else and you'll always be a slave to that that industry and those things. Um, and Thomas is asking here, does FPJ and LAB help with starting a worm bin? Sometimes, yeah. If you if you put it lightly and you soak your newspaper or coconut choir or whatever you're going to grow your worms in, it will help um, start that fermentation breakdown process. So that's the end of his first presentation, which is on, you know, the plant a little bit and getting that together. So next bit which I may as well go into. I got some time left here, although I am going to take a drink here. Is soil environment recovery. What does that mean? Who knows? Um, but he's going to talk about how to take poor soil and make it rich, right? It's pretty Kringlish here. Um, I'm sure that was just a literal translation of what he had in Korean to soil environment recovery, which in Korean, it probably makes sense for us. It's like soil environment recovery, like recovering your soil environment. I don't know. There's different ways of saying it. Um, and Diego P is correct. Salt, light, salt fertilizers kill IMO on soil. So lost fertility and need to buy more nuts. Six cycle. Yeah. I don't know if you need to buy more nuts, but you need to buy more call my nuts six cycle yeah and also um if you put down um chemical fertilizer it hardens from from its liquid soluble form it hardens with them about two weeks and so you have to continually apply the fertilizer because it turns back into its rock forms it doesn't want to stay soluble and then if you over nitrogen you actually shut down your roots ability to to synthesize nitrogen and to reach out and they get real lazy because they're like all oh, this nutrients and like there's so much nitrogen i don't need to make it and then after two weeks it hardens and then the plant's like ah and then it, then your plant it's like a it's like a crack addict man you got to continually give them the crack and then they get cracked out at the end but if if you stop and interrupt the crack man is it hard to have that recovery and that bounce back it's like if you're if you're doing you know crack or some sort of like chemical hard drug like you you want to study supply of it to be able to budget it but but because it's so expensive and all these other things it's very similar to chemical fertilizer um so would it be possible to download or buy this presentation and the old book on Canna if you showed last time i can't find much online besides the one free book with the basic techniques um i'm working on that i'll sort that out figure it out see what see what can be done um i i have these I'm, I'm sharing them under fair use education right here right now um if i sell them i may end up getting like i don't yeah i just this is fair use educational presentation showing sharing um so Basically, as he gets into this soil recovery, he shows this picture here, which is there's no waste around a plant. This is the natural cycle of what happens. You know, you see all these microbes penetrating down into the soil. These are like your lactobacillus exploring down, your anaerobic microbes, facultatively anaerobic. They're, they're the tillers which go down deep into the soil. Then once they make tunnels, then you have the aerobic microbes coming down that they, you know, the anaerobic make tunnels for the aerobic. So that's how Jadam works because it's mostly anaerobic. Can be aerobic too, but 
they make tunnels and then your other IMOs can breathe in the soil. You're making more space. That oxygen starts to get to the roots, which roots love oxygen. And then um, the microorganisms are secreting amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, enzymes. They're right living in the root zone right around there secreting all this. There's worms coming through, making holes, making tunnels, pooping out delicious microbes for them behind. You got your moles here, digging down, making holes, aerating your soil. Um, and the it says the mole tunnels that make the aerobic microbes happy. So some people try to get rid of their moles. They're digging uh, things because they cause problems. But if you let them dig around, they'll actually make aeration for you. And um, the hairy roots on the plants are looking for, um, are secreting food for the microorganisms and growing in this symbiotic relationship with the microbes and the roots feeding each other. Then you go up here to the leaves above the ground and um, the, the, you got on the leaves, you got lactic acid bacteria, yeast, other various microbes living there. You got um, um, photosynthetic microorganisms living here, actually helping take sunlight and like purple non-sulfur bacteria. And then when a bad microbe comes to attack all these microbes living on this surface, defend your leaves and, and keep disease from establishing and get, get there. And this is how, and then it grows up. And with the solar radiation coming down, it reaches up towards the sun to get more energy, do photosynthesis, make this whole system bigger. And this is what builds soil humus. It takes CO2 out of the air. It cleans the air. It takes all those toxins, puts them into carbon forms where the plants can absorb them and bury them deep under the earth and pull them out of the air, make the earth less, less toxic. You got to tell Greta about this one. This is the true how to clean the atmosphere, how to clean the world is getting more plants with natural cycles. This exact thing right here, microorganisms, better plants, moles, earthworms, microbes. This is the true, this and patent pending, of course, carbon sequestration, uh, clean the earth device. Oh, it's called a plant. Yeah. Oh, well, you can't patent natural things. Well, Maybe I'll just GMO it a little bit and then I can patent it and then make, you know, millions of dollars and whatever, uh, that whole industry, the whole thing that's happening. Um, but this is this, if you understand this, now you are the world leading climate change warrior out in your area to, to do this. Um, and you're on the front lines as a farmer, you can actually clean the, the, the whole land better than people that are, um, being paid to do this professionally. So, um, so, any other things you'd recommend to read? I'm reading the Jadam book right now. Um, I'd rec. I mean, there's a <clears throat> there's a lot of literature. Um, I, so I was talking to the Goofman, or he emailed me, and he was talking about Rohini Reddy's book. It's not good. I'm just saying that it's um it's not good. Um, and the Filipino book, it's not good. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff out there. Um, I yeah. Sorry, I, I, I should have, we should have published our book, but I've just, um, I lost faith in the world and hope and stuff. And I just thought prepping my own farm and all that and doing this office hour is better than me writing the book, but people want books and things and, um, yeah. And, um, and let me take, let me take a quick ad break here, um, that, yeah. Uh, so just, uh, what the. I gotta hang on, transition this. Um, way I am teaching classes here in Hawaii. If you want to come out, you want to learn, um, it's knfarm.com. Uh, let me pull it up on this other window here. knfarm.com. And I am teaching classes here on the Big Island. Um, and I have this one up right now. Uh, let me bring it over here. And um, right here, it's January 6th to the 12th, 2023, so this coming year, um, and I will be teaching here on Big Island, and this goes through the whole deal of level one, learning how to use the application, actually hands-on applying, understanding how seed soak, everything, the whole nutrient cycle operates, level two of making the solutions correctly, tasting them, knowing they're correct, 
and level three of a mentorship course to learn how to teach this. So you can be there. And like Thomas says, you just can't beat it. It's one of the best. Um, I, I mean, you know, coming out, learning, integrating, being there, seeing it happen. Um, you know, had hundreds of people come through by now. Um, and this, this here, this is, I really should update this photo because this whole field has been planted out. This was like a long time ago. I don't know when this, this was taken like two years ago, this photo. And the bananas are looking so healthy right now. They kind of look emaciated. Notice how right around the barn where they're tapped into the animal system, they're cranking. All my things are super green. They're not yellow like that. Um, or light green. I don't know. I'm colorblind, but um, but they're amazing. And we also have just like luxury accommodations while you're here. Um, you know, you get to stay in these nice cottages and it's well worth it. You know, I mean, you get to stay in one of these and, or you can stay anywhere else too and just take the class if you want, but you want to stay on the farm, you know, um, right here. Beautiful. Get your own toilet so you can poop as long as you want. Get your own shower. You can get clean. And you might catch a beautiful sunrise and you get to hang out with me and my wife. Thanks, Tyler, for taking these photos. Um, you make our place look great. And yeah, that that photo, this uh, rainbow came in right as uh, Tyler was just about to leave and take off and go back to Oklahoma. And he came out and stayed with us. And it's always fun. So, um, so yeah, thanks for the quick ad break get those together no which oh why do i this one yeah it's about a week long it's seven days long and um it's well worth it um if you're on a wahoo and you want to come over um check check me out uh write an email to drake at pure knf.org p-u-r-e-k-n-f dot o-r-g d-r-a-k-e at that um, and, um, you know, we can schedule something if you just want to come over for a day and a visit or something. Um, yeah. And to goof, man, I hope you got that book. I just sent it to you. So, um, in a few years when the financials work out, I'm not sure how long I'll be doing this, man. Now is the time. Do a GoFundMe, get some folks to sponsor you. Get over here now. Cause I do a lot of stuff, man, and teaching these classes and doing these things, it's it's hard for me to continue to do. And yeah, it's a week-long class, um, knffarm.com, check it out. I'm only doing one this year. Um, last last two years, I did, you know, like two, three classes, but it, it takes so much time, so much energy, and it's so worth it for you, and it's like, it's great. Um, I just, you know, I, I only have so much time. I really... You know, I'm working on infrastructure here and building things. I, you know, I, so my, my time, my classes, I only have so much time to do for that. Um, so let's see here. I wanted to get, let's see, I got one more. Um, well, you know what, since it's almost the end of the hour, I will start again next, next time, or we'll get into this presentation next time, which is soil environment recovery. I'll just give you a quick preview of what's happening next week. Look at this, talking about soil structure, soil structure, all this, IMOs, how all the IMOs get in there, what disease leaves look like, and then going into IMOs. So tune in next week, uh, 9 a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time, or watch it later wherever you're at. Enjoy. Um, and... Yeah, and planning your class around, I mean, that's the hardest thing for farmers, actually, for me to take a week off my farm. That's the most expensive thing. I just took a couple weeks off to go to weddings this last month, and it's like, Ur! and then I'm building this building, and I can't even get back to building. So it's, you know, oh, man, leaving your farm. I know how it is. I'm a, I'm a farmer. I got animals. The struggle is real. Um, just before I go here and get into this next week, oh, it's down. They they threatened me to take it down, and they did. Them them guys saying my server was crashing. And anyway, purknf.org is down right now, but I do believe um, knfsupport.com is up because I'm running that on an uh, DigitalOcean uh, instance instead of Host Papa, which apparently uh, boycott Host Papa. Just 
word to the wise. Um, but here, Pure KNF sponsored um, KNF support. You want to find all these episodes plus more and get help here, which looks like I got to tune in here and just put a little bit more love here. Of I've been doing a lot of things, but um, but you can click up here on office hours, find all these office hours plus more here. There it is live. And October 2nd, looks like I'm going to, after this episode wraps up, I'm going to update this. But um, we just go through the table of contents. My mom right here helps out with table of contents as well as my wife. And if you go back a couple episodes here and look, oh my gosh, look at all these table of contents. And so you can see, you know, can I use water kefir instead of KNF as a probiotic? Um, you know, what is my lacto is foaming um, KNF fuel a recipe and you know to add IMO or not to it all these questions and more have been answered by office hours and if you search here into office hours on the office hours page because you click office hours and you go down to this search bar right here you can search like for instance uh, fish amino and see and all of a sudden it shows up where all the posts that talk about fish aminos pop and there you get to see, and there's even more, right? So if you're curious and you have a question, you want to tune into the office hours, you're like, oh, okay, eating fish amino acids at 30 minutes, 22 seconds. So you go here, click on this play, go to 30 minutes. Well, let me fix that. Thank 22 you. 22 seconds right here. You get that whole and now we're talking about eating about fish, fish amino fish acids. Amino acid? we, we have some um, that's, that's actually... Over. Right. So here you go. That's and actually you, what, you, I, what I've been um, really th thinking about lately. Uh, so you I get to go know. here and see all these office hours and all this stuff. So if you like it, hit smash that super thanks, hit the thanks, whatever, do, do your thing. Better yet, go teach Korean natural farming to you and your friends. Thomas just trained somebody how to make a can of food. They made a fermented plant juice out of bananas and go spread this technology around, make it happen, make Master Cho proud and the K Pure Kana Foundation, or even that there. Um, you know, make the movement move, man. It's up to you. Um, don't waste your hate, rather gather and create. Be of service, be a sensible person. Use your words and don't be nervous. You can do this, you've got purpose. Find your KNF medicine and use it. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. I'll catch you next week. Long live the natural farmer. Yes, thank you, Julia. And uh, good to see you all. And uh, hope you're having a great rest of your week. And I'll see you next week. Aloha.